Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm this good. is so exciting. <laughs> no, Lucy, I saw your message and I thought, oh my gosh, I, I have to support um, an 11 year old doing her own podcast. That's incredible. So, <laughs> bravo. Thank you so much. Where are you quarantining at? I am in my parents' home right now in Missouri. Cool. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you quarantining from? I'm in Seattle, Washington. Awesome. Yeah. So as we are about to start, I just have some topics from like you starting out, but then I have like a lot of other topics because you're like, you do a lot of stuff. (laughs) (laughs) I try. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So as we start, could you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, uh, I started doing theater when I was about 10 years old. I live in a small town in Missouri. I grew up in a small town in Missouri where there weren't a lot of theater opportunities, but there was a little theater about 30 minutes down the road. So when my dad heard at work that they were doing Annie and he, he knew that I had the whole movie memorized, he mm-hmm. said, well, we should take her to audition so I got a part and the rest is really history because I just had such a blast working on that show and then I started doing more and more theater and uh, that meant that I had to drive about an hour into St. Louis which Mm -hmm. is the closest Uh, but I did and so I grew up doing that sort of as a hobby until probably my junior or senior year of high school Um, I also played sports and uh I did a, I was involved in a lot of like school clubs and stuff, but I'd say around my junior year, I started really getting serious about musical theater mm-hmm. and um, auditioned for schools and, and then went to New York. <laughs> what, um, what are some of your favorite acting experiences and something you've learned from them? Oh my gosh. Well, I think, my my first experience where I really I really felt the magic the magic of theater, I was in a show at the Muni, which is in St. Louis. It's an outdoor theater, and it's one of those theaters where some sometimes Broadway stars will come back during the summertime if they're not in a Broadway show mm-hmm. to work. Uh, I was only in the ensemble, and I was only on stage for like two minutes the whole show. <laughs> But I remember during rehearsals, we were singing um, The God's Love Nubia from Aida. And it's basically a song where the, the leading lady, she's the princess of this country, has to lift up her people because the country is being taken over. And um, we, had, we had Simone uh, as our leading lady. And we start singing the song and she starts crying. And then other people in the ensemble in front of me start crying. And then everybody starts feeling that same thing and then it starts raining outside and luckily we were under a pavilion so we actually really it was so cool it was like everybody was feeling the same thing and the two worlds right the story that we're telling and then our reality sort of meshed together and it was just really powerful and really incredible and that was one of those moments where I'm like oh my gosh this is why I do theater Um, this is incredible and uh, to be able to tell stories and hopefully inspire an audience uh, feels really really amazing and then the other story I have for you um, I I, growing up I always thought I needed to be like a perfect uh, cookie cutter musical theater almost like princess like (laughs) <laughs> with my performances. Um, mm-hmm. But when I got the part in Kinky Boots, do you know the show Kinky Boots? Yeah. Um, the, the part is, uh, the character's name is Lauren. Mm-hmm. And she sings a song whenever she realizes that she likes the main guy. And um, you get to see a really quirky, goofy side of her. And <laughs> that was an area that I was a little uncomfortable having. <laughs> but once I embraced my quirky, side um, I started having a blast and it was so much fun to hear the audience laugh at something that I, I did that I used to think wouldn't be celebrated and so that was a good lesson to learn too. yeah so now that we kind of have like the base about who you are 
I I want to let you choose which you want to start on. We can either keep on going with your like acting. We can talk about right out loud or your directing. Oh my gosh. Well, um I just did right out loud. So let's talk about right out loud. For a second, huh? Okay. So, could you provide a basic overview of what Write Out Loud is? Yeah. So, uh, during my Mean Girls run, mm -hmm. I was feeling a little bit bored because I had done the show so many times, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't have a lot to do during the daytime. And also, I had gained so so many followers. I realized I had this this influence over young people, and so I wanted to use it for good. So, I called up my friend Ben who uh, he's kind of the guy who helps me anytime I have an audition or I need to learn music. He's my go-to guy. And so I called him up. I said, Ben, what can we do here? How can we inspire young people to continue writing musical theater songs, right? Songs that have a, a strong story, a strong plot. And so we just said, well, let's try something out. <laughs> and so we made we put this contest together. People could submit their song, and we got like 500 songs. And suddenly, I'm like, "Oh my gosh, that's so many songs to <laughs> listen to!" Um, but it was amazing. And we chose three songs to record in a studio and put them on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes. Um, and then we chose, I think, 12 songs to perform at 54 Below. Have you heard of 54 Below? Yeah, fine scenes, right? That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's um, a concert venue space in, in New York uh, where all the Broadway houses are. And mm -hmm. uh, so we did a concert there and those videos are all on YouTube. Um, but it was just really cool to see these young, upcoming, emerging musical theater songwriters get together and, and form a, a community and, and really cool to lift them up and celebrate them. Uh, yeah. so, so this year we had, you know, the virus that kept mm -hmm. us from getting together in person, but we just did uh, a virtual concert. Yeah. Which was fun. Mm -hmm. How does the how does the selection process work? Is what's your criteria and stuff? Yeah, that's like? a good question. Uh, so we we rank them sort of one through five as we go down, mm -hmm. and we'll add in notes. You know, this one has a really positive message, or this one has an incredible tune that gets stuck in your head, or. Uh, stuff like that, uh, and then we narrow that down uh, and and sort of go through a top 25 list. This year, I sent out the list to some other uh, folks to to rank as well. I sent it out to uh, Tom Kitt and, and Lynn Manuel Miranda and Amanda Green, and um, I didn't get them. I didn't. Uh, we didn't clock who ranked what so that it mm -hmm. felt really fair. But um, then from there, we just chose the ones that got the uh, the highest rank. Mm -hmm. yeah. How can, um, well, now that the performance is, but for ne the future, future happenings of Write Out Loud, how could you enter and what do you really want as a message to be shown out about Write Out Loud? Well, um, you can you can go on to our, our website. We had one of our donors, um, mm -hmm. his name is Josh. He uh, donated last year, and this year he said, hey, I like building websites. Can I build you a website? We said, yeah! So he built this <laughs> incredible website. It's called writeoutloudcontest.com. Mm -hmm. So that's where you can go to find information. Otherwise, I'll be pumping things out on my Instagram anytime there's uh, upcoming you know, news or whatnot. Uh, and the main message really is just to inspire and empower um, uh, young young people to to write their story. So as a, as a young actor, I always felt like my story wasn't worth hearing or telling. I always just thought I was there to act out someone else's story. So um, I want to encourage people to, to write their own and and um, and continue writing if that's their passion. Yeah, it's also really powerful because you have like influence in the world and it's really amazing how people use that influence for good it's important I think don't you mm -hmm. yeah so next since you were kind of talking about actors a few seconds ago do you want to go into your theater aspect sure okay so how you already said you started through Annie but after that you how what was your first professional show well, Annie was in a professional theater, but it really was a kid's show. 
Um, but beyond that, I think I was a spoon in Beauty and the Beast at the <laughs> Yeah. So, so how do you think you performing in your professional theaters bridged you to where you are now? Well, uh, I really enjoyed playing uh, the smaller roles at the professional level because I got to watch the leading ladies and how they they treated um, their director and their co-stars and their, their ensemble um, castmates and then how they worked with their material, how they led with kindness, how they weren't divas. Um, <laughs> Uh, how they handled the pressure, right? All of these things. So that was really helpful. And then it was cool to then take what I learned or saw there and apply it when I just did my high school show where I got to maybe play the lead, right? So it was nice to have a little bit of, of both of those experiences so that I could put that together and, and shape my own as I, as I grew up and got older. Mm-hmm. How did you... How did you get into New York? Well, I, uh, when I was thinking about, when I was graduating high school, I was thinking about where do I want to go to college? So I really did a lot of research on what, are, what schools have the top musical theater programs. Mm-hmm. So I, I figured that out and I said to myself, I'm going to audition at six schools and if I don't get into any of those, maybe I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket because it's hard mm-hmm. to know when you're young and in high school, uh, how you compare up to the kids in the rest of the country, right? You could mm-hmm. be really good. Uh, one of the top musical theater actresses in in your city, mm-hmm. but does that mean you're still, you know, going right. to be able to reach the top and, and make it on Broadway? So um, I always knew that even if I didn't go into musical theater as a career, I wanted to keep it in my life. Um, mm-hmm as a hobby. So that may, meant maybe I could just stick to community theater. And that was mm-hmm. okay. But anyway, I ended up getting into Michigan, which has a mm-hmm. great program. And so while I was there during my sophomore year, they were looking for young actors to play high schoolers in the show Bring It On. Mm-hmm. And uh, lucky for me, I, I was one of those people. lucky high schoolers. I mean, yeah. well, lucky college persons. <laughs> yeah. So after Bring It On, what did you do next? Well, to be honest, after Bring It On, I didn't do very much. Um, I was auditioning a lot. I did a few readings. Do you know what a reading is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And a few workshops, I think. And um, I was just, I was really auditioning and and like babysitting so that I could be making money on the side and and really uh, what we call grinding away. So I had a little bit of a, a break there and um, I think my next thing was was doing grease at paper mill in, mm-hmm. in New Jersey there near New York um, and I had even gone to LA to live in, in LA and see if I liked liked being there a little mm-hmm. bit between so I, I, I had a little bit of a unemployment bout which I think is important that I tell you that so because I think it's so much easier to focus on the highlight reel mm-hmm. yeah because um, being on Broadway is not an easy feat. It takes like tons of auditions before you get your big break. And sometimes people don't get their big break for years. That's absolutely right. I have some really talented friends that I think they're more talented than I am. Like, <laughs> I'm serious. And they have yet to just uh, hit that perfect role for them, you know? Mm-hmm. And sometimes, which kind of sounds weird, sometimes it's not... There's so many pieces that have to fit. I mean, talent's a big part, but there's also, like, the height of the co-star, how, like, they fit in. 100%. Unfortunately, in this business, the way you look does impact uh, whether you're right for a part or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it can be really challenging. And and also, I'll say, I think being a good person is important, too, and being lovely to work with is, is important. Yeah, like... In my school, when we'd audition, people would always say, like, oh, you should be, like, nice to the director, nice to the stage manager, nice to the compliment. Yes, that's right. But you should be nice to everyone anyway, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because also, well, first, you should be nice to everyone. But even though sometimes it seems like the actors are the only ones seen, like, there's so many things going on 
that help the actors actually act? 100%. Yeah. So now we can, if you're okay with it, how about let's go a little farther on in the chronologically and talk a little bit about Mean Girls? Okay, yeah. Okay. So how is your audition process like for Mean Girls? Well, it was a little bit different than I think my first experience auditioning for a Broadway show because the the creative team, not not all of the creative team, um, and the casting director already knew me, right? Because mm -hmm. I was in the Pinky Booth at the time and I had already done Bring It On and both of those shows were cast by the same casting director. So um, I, I, I was fortunate that they already knew me, which meant I got to skip a step because they knew kind of what my strengths were and whether I was right for a part or not. So on one hand, that was awesome. On the other hand, that meant my very first audition for Mean Girls, Tika Faye was in the room. Yeah. And that was so <laughs> nerve-wracking. Because sometimes when you get to go in for an initial audition, uh, mm -hmm. the director or even, uh, even the casting director might give you a little bit of feedback to help you understand what they're looking for. But when you walk into that first audition <laughs> and it's a callback for other people, um, you could kind of have that, uh, <laughs> I don't know, those nerves because you don't know what they're looking for. Yeah, and even like going into the first audition, you get a lot of people get nerves and then just skipping. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> How was your audition like? Did you just read some sides, sing some song? Yeah, I, I read the sides in the, the very first cafeteria scene, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know what I'm talking about there? I when, think so. When Regina and Katie meet for mm -hmm. the first time. And then I sang a little bit of Someone Gets Hurt, but it was it was very different from what it ended up being when it got to Broadway. So my first my first real audition for Mean Girls was actually for the workshop for the lab. They're kind of an interchangeable word. Um, of Mean Girls. I wasn't, I didn't know I was auditioning for the Broadway show at the time. I just was auditioning for like a four week uh, workshop yeah. at, that, at that point. Because that was even before it had its out of town tryouts, right? That's right. Yeah. So, what was your favorite part about being in Mean Girls? Mm. I think probably the rehearsal process. Um, you know that feeling when you're working on a show and you just bond so much with your cast and you know you're working on something that's so much bigger than all of you <laughs> and it's something that's going to be so amazing and it's so exciting. Um, that feeling, that anticipation and the joy and then um, that, that the being able to be creative in a rehearsal room. I really loved working with this creative team and with Tina because um, they weren't very hard on us. Uh, in, in terms of, they, they really let us play and explore mm -hmm. and um, learn for ourselves what was going to work best for our characters. They trusted us as actors, uh, which was really nice um, because I think that makes for more creativity. Yeah, that's like a really great aspect of having a good creative team. Like, of course, they need to direct you a little bit, but like giving you the freedom to roam around so like you can find what works for you. Absolutely. What was the most challenging part about being in Rain Girls? Mm, I think um, one aspect that you could imagine was challenging was how much pressure it was mm -hmm. and, and how, uh, how much focus it needed to have in order to do a good job, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and focus can mean discipline in terms of making sure you're healthy, um, making sure your voice is gonna work, mm -hmm. right? And then um, just being, um, the, the handling the pressure from the show. I mean, the, this show, even before we opened, had a lot of attention on it, right? Yeah, because of the movie. That's right, yeah. yeah. And, and I... I've heard like a lot of people have like a lot of opinions between like being the movie and adaptation because while the musical is still awesome, there were some parts like people really missed from the movie that wasn't placed in the thing. Yes, it's really hard to make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was, what was your favorite song to listen to and perform? Mm. 
I really liked um, the ending song because that's when we delivered the positive message. And that was really important to me because sometimes playing Regina, I felt like, I felt like it was easy to look up to Regina for the wrong reasons, right? Like she's very trendy. She knows how to dress. She knows how to do her makeup and her hair. And um, those things are definitely worth celebrating. But um, I think it meant that her, um, her <laughs> mean manipulative um, behavior sometime was overlooked. And mm -hmm. that, so it was really important to me that we delivered that positive message at the end with, with stars, right? Mm -hmm. and, and also in the bathroom scene, I liked having that. Mm -hmm. uh, to sing, uh, and this is one uh, aspect about Regina that I do love despite her negative behavior sometimes. <laughs> um, she really owned her power, right? She never apologized. Um, she she really she really gave uh, herself I think the the love that she deserved and, and um, in World Burn I really got to feel I really got to step into her <laughs> shoes right where she's feeling powerful and she's getting all of her anger out sure but um, it it was a it was a nice um, challenge for me to step into every night yeah one thing that I like about showing that is because like she's I mean she some could say like she's a bad person but there's always like qualities of like a bad person that could be taken as qualities of a good person that's right and every villain uh if you step into their shoes they don't think that they're the bad guy you mm -hmm. know in, in their heart and in their mind they feel like they're doing the right thing yeah and adding on to that a little even if they might think it's the wrong thing, they always have like a root that's like, they think that's the right thing. That's right. Yeah. So now do you want to like move on to directing? Sure. Yeah. So you, right before COVID, you were actually supposed to make your directing debut in the Ozark Theater, right? That's right. I was so excited. <laughs> yes. Yes. You were supposed to do pitch in, right? Well, we were, yes, we were going to, going to do pitch in um, at a, a theater called Stages St. Louis Academy. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that is a, a musical, pitch in is a musical I wrote with some friends of mine, Hannah Klepfer and Nat Zagree. Uh I co-wrote the lyrics and the book, the script with the two of them. And um, we wrote it because we realized there, there weren't a lot of musicals, there wasn't a lot of material out there for sort of that older middle school into high school age. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of times that age group is trying to do shows that that was written for adults. Mm -hmm. So um, we wanted to write something for that age range. And we also wanted to write something that was in the educational realm because um, we like teaching and, and we like supporting uh, from that. And then also uh, the story is focuses a little bit on science and technology, mm -hmm. which is cool because I don't think there's a ton of that already out there uh, and merging the arts with mm -hmm. uh, those fields. It yeah. felt right. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we wrote that show. We were going to do it at stages, but then COVID hit. We couldn't do it. So we started doing it online as a virtual workshop. We just sort of made it up as we went. We were like, okay, let's, let's just try. You know, we want to make sure there's still stuff for kids to do at home. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, it's, it's gone really well. We're on like our eighth workshop of it. Yeah. And um, we're writing a sequel. Whoa. I know. And on <laughs> Wednesday, July 8th, we are basically performing it mm -hmm. on Zoom um, for, for an audience to watch. Uh, normally, when we do our workshops, only parents and friends are invited mm -hmm. of the cats. But this time, uh, we're, we're kind of opening it up, opening it up to the public, and we're donating a, a, some of the profits to, uh, to coding girls who code and mm -hmm. some other organizations that inspire girls to code. Yeah, really interesting thing real quick. Tomorrow yeah. I am interviewing Hannah. Hannah! I'm so excited! <laughs> uh, we were meeting today and she told me that. <laughs> yeah, so what did made you kind of want to direct? Well, I've always watched musicals and even in working on them 
I would always have ideas spinning in my head of how to make this work or how to communicate this element or tell this part of the story. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I never felt empowered enough to act on any of those thoughts until I, I think uh, doing Mean Girls and, and probably just growing up too. Uh, and and I, I've learned through teaching that I like um, inspiring and sort of uh, uh, teaching young actors how to try different things uh, mm -hmm. and discover for themselves. And so I really love that light bulb moment. Uh, and it's too, and it's fun. And then finding sort of a trial and error, finding aspects um, within our, our storytelling uh, discovery or rehearsal, when you hit that moment where you're like, oh my gosh, that's it, that's incredible. Um, that is so fun. And, and uh, being on the actor side, you don't really get to watch. You have to be the, the one that's trying it out and then ask the director, okay, how's it look? Is it working? Whatever. So I really like being on this side too, when I can um, play and and, and learn and, and discover um, on, on this side of things. Yeah. And it's also really cool how you've also had the actor side while you direct. So you can, not so much like sympathy, I don't think that's a word, but like somewhere in that zone where you can like see how like the actors, like how they do it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the word you are looking for is empathize with them, <laughs> right? Because I've been in their shoes and I know what it feels like 100%. And uh, I intend to use that uh, every step of the way for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what I think is another thing that's really cool is that even though COVID-19 is a lot of like bad stuff and negative vibes, it's really a lot of good things have come from it, which like being giving access to like pitch in like before that'd probably be at almost on maybe even national cast but like probably within the area but now like you guys have people from like india we and do it's so cool and you know what also is cool that i underestimated um i don't know about you but when i was growing up i was kind of the only theater nerd in my school i mean there were other people that liked it but i was like the only one that really got so excited about it and so what i'm learning through pitch in is that we're getting that kid from all the different schools and putting them together and suddenly they feel like they're finding their people, right? <laughs> and that just feels so cool um, for them to feel accepted and a, and a part of a group like that. Um, and, and so that's been really rewarding too. You wouldn't get to have that if mm -hmm. COVID. Yeah. yeah, because there are so many like boundaries that comes without like with just being in people. I mean, being with people is awesome, but also there's always like a good thing that comes out of everything. So with, and I've seen a lot with like these uh, theater kid workshops, like I've seen like a lot of people like become like friends because like they probably would have, there's like so little chance they would have met each other in just like the real world. 100% I agree. Yeah. Well, I th is there unless there's anything else you want to talk about, I think that's all the content we need for now. I think that's amazing. Lucy, I just want to say that I think you are an incredibly smart young lady <laughs> and um, also have a really sweet and giving heart, and that is amazing. Worth celebrating. Thank you. So much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much, and I hope you and your loved ones stay safe and have a good time during the rest of quarantine because it's gonna last a little longer. <laughs> um, same to you. I appreciate that a lot. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.